So it's July 2018 and I'm broke AF. I've just come back from a holiday in Venice, which was fun, but my bank account is looking uh, quite sticky. Being a student and working part-time, I was having some income coming in, but as the money was coming in, it was going straight out on useless stuff like clothes. Okay, not very useless. And trips and holidays and tech stuff. And all in all, that meant that I was saving very small amounts. But then I decided to embark on a journey of which the destination I was unaware of. I didn't know exactly where it was gonna lead. And it was this channel. And I started making videos and I started thinking a lot more about finances and money. And it was just something I became more and more interested in. We were never really taught it in school, even though we were taught like two plus two is four minus one, that's three quick maths, yeah, mathematics. But we were never really taught exactly how to, uh, how to save money effectively, how to invest money uh, and money strategies in general. And so as I started the channel, I started to do a lot more reading in the topic. And hold on, I'm not claiming to be a professional. I'm not claiming a professional title, but there are some things I've learned. And so we can talk a bit about some of those things. And today we're gonna to talk about the basics of finances and money in the context of a book that I read a while back, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by the writer and finance guru or whatever you want to call him, Robert Kiyosaki. And in this book, he breaks down some concepts that can be quite life-changing if applied properly. And the first one is investing in assets and avoiding liabilities. Many people understand that an asset is something that is good and a liability is something that is generally not that good. But very few can apply those concepts correctly. So let's talk about these in simple terms. An asset, he says, is anything that brings money into your pocket. A liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket. An asset generally grows over time and a liability generally keeps taking money from your pocket over time. And intertwined between these two is cash flow. And that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just where the cash is flowing. So you have an asset which brings money into your account and in terms of cash flow becomes an income. And then you have liabilities which takes money out of your account or your pocket. And in terms of cash flow becomes an expense, money going out. So at this point, you're probably saying, you know what, I've clicked this video. I've been watching for two, three, four minutes. And you've only told us of stuff that we already know. So relax. Let's take some examples. Let's say you have $50,000 or, or pounds in your bank account and you want to buy a brand new car. Let's say a simple figure, the car is $20,000. Now, is this car an asset or a liability? The very first thing is that it's gonna take away money from your pocket or your account when you purchase the car. So it's gonna take 20,000 out of your pocket into the pocket of the dealer or the uh, shop or wherever you're buying it from or the person you're buying it from. Yeah, and therefore it's an expense and therefore you could possibly categorize it as a liability. But hold on, once you've bought the car, there are other expenses that come associated with the car. So for example, you're gonna have to pay for petrol regularly. You're gonna have to pay for taxes like road tax. You're gonna have to pay for insurance. And these are regular periodic kind of expenses that are gonna come out of your pocket and therefore it's acting as a liability and it's not bringing money into your pocket or your account. Now let's take another example, which is slightly more controversial and a bit more interesting, which is a house. And a lot of people will say that a house is always an asset, but that's not necessarily true. Let's say you're buying a house in order to live in it and the house is about 400,000 pounds or dollars. You're probably gonna take about a 300,000 pound or dollar mortgage. Now, if you're living in it, you're gonna have to pay a monthly expense for the mortgage. That's what maybe a 600, 700, 800 pound mortgage every month that's going out of your pocket. But then you're gonna tell me, hold on here, I'm paying towards the house because eventually it will become mine. I'll own it eventually. 
but hold your horses. Most likely, number one, you're gonna be paying a lot more back to the bank than you actually borrowed. So if you borrowed $300,000 or pounds in terms of a mortgage, you might be paying back a total of 450,000. So that's 150,000 that you didn't even borrow and that's a, an expense for sure. The other thing is that with owning a house comes other expenses like utilities, like repairs for the house, like taxes when you buy and sell the house particularly in the UK. All of these expenses add up, especially if you're buying a much larger house. So for example, a lot of people live in a smaller house and then they make a bit more money and they end up wanting to like level up their, uh, their property and so they buy a much larger house and therefore the expenses become a lot more. In this case, money is going out of your pocket, out of your account, into the account of other people and it's acting as by definition a liability. The only time a property can become an asset truly is if you buy it as an investment in order to rent it out. So for example, say I buy a house again for £400,000 or dollars and I take a mortgage on that and I pay a monthly mortgage fee of £800 a month. Then there are utilities, say maybe £200 a month and then there are all the taxes and other stuff, say another £100 and then say it repairs another 200. So in that case, we're up at 1,300 pounds and I'm renting out the property for 1,500 a month. Then that means there's a 200 pound profit that's bringing money into my account, into my pocket. And therefore it's an asset and the cash flow is, it's an income. That's how it becomes an asset. So what our guy Robert Kiyosaki says is to avoid liabilities as much as possible and invest in assets as much as we can from an early age. Now, no one's saying buying a car is bad. No one's saying buy a house is bad, but understand the difference between liabilities and assets. So here's an issue that we're all too familiar with. And this is a stupid thing that most of us do in particular when we're not from wealthy backgrounds. And it's that we keep spending almost as much as we make every month. And every time we make more money, we spend more. And this is something that happens all the time. If, you, if you're not from a wealthy background, you suddenly have all of this money to spend. And so you want to spend it on all of the things that you couldn't get when you were younger, for example. But one of the strategies to try and limit your liabilities as much as possible is to live below your means. Like, let me give this example. You're a person working in a supermarket and you're making 1,100 pounds a month or dollars, yeah? And you live comfortably on that amount while you're working in that job. But then you level up and you get a job for 2,000 pounds a month. Now, what the average Joe does is because they're making a lot more money, now suddenly they start spending all of that money too and their expenses go up to 2,000. That doesn't even make sense. You were living comfortably on 1,100 a month. Really and truly what you should be doing is taking that difference and saving it and then investing it in assets. Instead of now suddenly because you've got all of this free flowing cash, you start spending it on this iPod or this, or this, this, uh, this car that you don't really need or this and this and that. Now there's nothing wrong with buying a lot of stuff, but only if you can afford it. Now an easy rule that you can follow when you're buying products or items is that unless you have 10x the amount of that thing or item that you're trying to buy or 10 times the amount of that thing that you're trying to buy, then don't buy it. So if I'm buying an iPhone for a thousand pounds, then I should have at least a minimum of 10,000 in my account. Point number two is to learn not to work for money. And this one sounds a bit counterintuitive, but bear with me here. For some strange reason, when we go to school, the only method that we're taught in terms of making money is to exchange our unit time for unit money. So for example, exchanging one hour of my time for 10 pounds, or exchanging 10 hours of my time for 500 pounds, it doesn't matter how much it is, right? It could be 100 pounds an hour, it could be 50 pounds an hour, it could be 300 pounds an hour. Still, every time I spend an hour, I'm exchanging that for a specified amount of money or a unit amount of, 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 of income. And I guess the reason why it's promoted so much is because it has quite a low risk attached to it. Like if you spend a specified amount of time in that thing, then you'll get a specified amount of income back. And like anything, there are other options and alternatives out there. If one is willing to see 
what's around. And that thing is to take this pot and to sprinkle in a bit of risk. All right, just dash a bit of risk in there and to work for free for a period of time in order to reap an exponential reward. So for example, you might decide to start a clothing brand and you work on this brand for two, three, four years without making any profits from it. But what you might find is that five to 10 years down the line, you might be putting in the same amount of unit time as you were doing on day one when you started your company. But this time you're making 50 to 60 grand a month. But see what's happening here? On day one, you put a specified amount of time in, which is maybe eight hours a day and you are making nothing. Five years down the line, you're putting a specified amount of time in, which is eight hours, but you're making 50 grand a month. And then 10 years down the line, you're putting a specified amount of time, which is still the same, eight hours a day, but you're making 300 grand a month. Notice here the exponential growth. You're still putting the same amount of time, but your income is increasing. Obviously here, the risk is that you might be putting in laws of work for two to three years without ever getting a return. But that's a risk that those people who embark on that journey are willing to accept for something exponential. And the beauty and the wisdom in this is that you're actually kind of applying delayed gratification or you're getting a delayed return on early work, which is uh, a concept I quite like. And point number three is to mind your business. And that sounds funny as if like you're always getting involved in other people's private affairs, but that, that, that's not the point of this point. The point is that many people think that their job is their business. And so when they go to work, they're minding their business. But, rea but the reality is that your job is not your business, your job is your profession. And so if all you're doing is just going to your job uh, or, or dealing with your profession, and you're not minding your business, then you're gonna end up minding other people's business and growing other people's wealth. And what is your business? Your business is what you do outside work. What are you using that money that is coming in from your job? If you're an accountant or if you're a doctor or if you're a nurse or if you're working in a supermarket, all of that money that's coming in, what are you doing with it? Where are you putting it into work? And the way to put it into work is to invest in assets, like we said before. And some ways of investing in assets is to invest money into maybe your own side hustle or your own business that you can grow and you can work for without working for money, like we said in point number two. And so hopefully your assets should continue growing by putting money into stocks and shares and index funds and, and properties and, uh, buying businesses and starting your businesses, etc. So mind your business. Don't mind other people's business. And that's it for this video. And I hope you like this video. I hope you found it useful. If you want me to talk more about these types of topics, I don't know if it's interesting or not, but leave me a comment in the comment field below. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon again. Shh. Say.